So we've been looking at how to convert between moles and particles. But that isn't the only conversion factor. That 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd isn't the only way you can convert to a mole. Another way you can, can convert to a mole is by looking at the mass of your substance. And we've talked about how that periodic table has been designed. So that way the masses, when you look, for example, at helium's mass of 4.0026, the units that can go along with that number could be atomic mass units, or it could be grams. The, those masses, we call them molar masses. They are the mass if you were to have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of your substance. So if you had a mole's worth of neon, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of neon, and you were to pour them on a balance, you could look at your periodic table, and the periodic table tells you how much that pile would weigh, 20.180 grams. Now, just to help you keep your sanity, in our class, we're going to have a class rule that we can round all masses on the periodic table to the tenths place. Sig figs and molar masses, as you will see, get really sticky because you're going to have to multiply one set of rules, add different set of rules. Some of them have two decimal places, three, four. It quite frankly becomes a sig fig nightmare. So, we're just going to come up with a class rule that says anytime we're doing molar masses, chop it at the tenths place. So my 20.180 would turn into 20.2. If I had rubidium, I'd go over to rubidium on my periodic table, number 37, and I see 85.468. If I'm just going to keep a tenths place, I'd chop that in between the 4 and the 6, and that would round to an 85.5. Well, those look like conversion factors to me that we could do a factor label problem with. If you have 5.3 moles worth of neon, and I said, how many grams would that be? We need a moles grams conversion factor. Well, we've got one right here. A mole's worth of neon weighs 20.2 grams. So I want my moles to cancel out and go away. So one mole's worth of neon would weigh 20.2 grams. We'd have to account for sig fig. So when you throw this in your calculator, your calculator will say 107.06. But the number 5.3 only has two sig figs. This guy has three sig figs. So two is worse. We're going to keep two sig figs. So I would go to round my answer and say, let's keep two. So that would round to 110 grams. I'm just going to give you the answer to the second one. 100, or not 102, excuse me, 1.02 moles of rubidium. So if you want to try that one, that's what you should get as your answer. But what if we're not doing molar masses of just elements? What if we're doing molar masses of a compound? So those numbers you see in a chemical formula, like for calcium phosphate there, we see three calciums. The three could represent atom ratios if you're thinking small scale, but we're in our mole chapter, large scale. So we have three moles worth of calcium. We have two moles worth of phosphorus because the phosphate ion has been doubled with that PO4 two. And we have eight moles worth of oxygen. Be careful, some people accidentally say six moles of oxygen. They add instead of multiply. So we would go to our periodic table and say, well, I don't know how much three moles of calcium weighs, but I do know how much one mole weighs. One mole weighs 40.078 grams. So if we just round that to the tenths place, that would round to 40.1. 
the calcium part weighs 120.3 grams. What about phosphorus? We find phosphorus on our periodic table, 30.97. If I'm going to round to the tenths place, I have to chop between the 9 and the 7. The 7 bumps the 9 to a 10, so we have a, like a double bump situation, 31 grams. So if we have 2 moles worth of phosphorus, that would weigh 62 grams. For oxygen, we don't know right off the top of our heads how much 8 moles weighs, but we can look at our periodic table to figure out how much 1 mole weighs, 15.999 or 16.0 for keeping a tenths place. So the oxygen part, 128. Again, don't worry about sig figs. Just tenths place, tenths place, tenths place. We add those three components up and get the number 310.3 grams. That's what we call the molar mass of calcium phosphate. One mole's worth of calcium phosphate. If we had 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd formula units of calcium phosphate, poured them on a balance, the mass would be 310.3. Now, we just finished our formula writing chapter, right? And I had you do lots of practice with formula writing. The reason why I wanted to make sure you were really good at it is if I said, tell me the molar mass of magnesium nitrate. If you don't know what magnesium nitrate is, you can't even get to the point where you figure out the molar mass, right? So that's why we have to be really good and strong at our formula writing. I'm just going to give you the answer to this guy if you wanted to try this one.